it's Naharika with another SAT Biology video. Today we're going to be talking about cell reproduction, so this includes mitosis and meiosis. Now, before a cell undergoes any type of cell division, every chromosome needs to replicate itself. And so when we're going to talk about the cell cycle, we have interphase, which is the first and longest portion of the cell cycle. During this phase, chromosomes are duplicated and the cell continues to perform normal functions. And the specific phase where the chromosomes are duplicated is called the S phase. The other two phases are the G1 and G2 phases where the cell just grows and in the G2 phase it'll create some of the necessary organelles for the replication. A quick vocabulary note, after the DNA has replicated into two sister chromatids they're joined at the center called a centromere and they're still considered one chromosome even though there's two chromatids. Now, instead of saying the cell has 92 chromosomes, it still has 46 chromosomes with two chromatids each. So now we're going to start with mitosis. The first phase is prophase. Now, during the step, centrioles move to opposite sides of the cell, and they begin to form the mitotic spindle. The chromosomes will condense, and the nuclear membrane begins to break up. Next, we have metaphase. So during this time, chromosomes will line up in the middle of the cell, and this is called the metaphase plate. Step three is anaphase, where the centromere is split, or in other words, the two sister chromatids are split at the centromere, so that each chromatid separates to their respective cells. During this time, the cell begins to form a cleavage furrow, which occurs in animal cells, where the cells kind of pinch inward, beginning to form two separate cells. Now the last step is telophase, during which the nuclear membrane forms around each new cell. Now the cytoplasm divides during cytokinesis and a lot of books will tell you that meiosis and cytokinesis are separate but usually cytokinesis will overlap just a little bit with telophase and during cytokinesis this is when the two new daughter cells form and begin interphase. Now we're going to move on to meiosis. Now it's for important to be familiar with the idea of gene expression. So this is when a gene creates a protein and it is said that that gene is now being expressed. So meiosis is the formation of gametes within the body which are the only human cells that are haploid. So in our cases when it says haploid, half the chromosomes, it's 23 chromosomes but not all haploid cells are going to have 23 chromosomes, especially when you're talking about different animals. So when the two gametes meet from different sexes they form a zygote which is a diploid cell, and that occurs after fertilization. Meiosis begins at interphase, when the chromosomes have been duplicated, and meiosis is kind of different than mitosis. You have two separate sections of four phases each. So during prophase one, synapsis occurs, which is when homologous chromosomes pair up. So remember that homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that code for similar traits, but one of them is inherited by mom, one of them is inherited by dad, such as eye color. So you're going to have one by mom, let's say it's blue eyes, one by dad, brown eyes. Together, those two chromosomes that carry those two traits are called homologous chromosomes. So because this takes a while, prophase 1 is the longest phase of meiosis. Synapsis takes a really long time because you form these pairs of homologous pairs, and so this pair is made up of four chromatids, we call this pair a tetrad. After synapsis occurs, you're going to have crossing over, which takes place, and this is when some segments of your homologous chromosomes are exchanged between each other, which is kind of confusing when you think about it, but really it's just like you're giving somebody else their leg, they're giving you back another leg. Really, really weird example, but kind of works. Lastly, the spindle is formed, the chromosomes condense, and the nuclear membrane begins to disintegrate. So metaphase 1 is when the chromosomes line up at the equator of the cell, and they continue to stay in their homologous pairs. So this is different from mitosis, when you just have sister chromatids lining up. Now it's two pairs of chromatids. Now during the step, it's important to understand that independent assortment, which is the way the chromosomes will line up, affects the genetic information of each gamete because the genes of non-homologous chromosome pairs are inherited independently and they're unaffected by other genes. So that's basically the definition of independent assortment. Remember to associate that with metaphase 1. Now genes in the same chromosome are called linked genes and these are inherited 
together most of the time. Basically, a linked gene is when you have two alleles on a chromosome and they're super close together. So usually, if you're going to get one of them, you're going to get the other. Crossing over won't usually interfere with both of those being inherited together. During anaphase 1, your centromeres don't divide, but the homologous pairs separate. So again, different from mitosis, you have two sister chromatids in each cell. During telophase 1, the two cells finish dividing their cytoplasm via cytokinesis. The membranes reform, and each cell has 23 replicated chromosomes and technically are considered haploid cells because they have 23 replicated chromosomes. But the problem is, is that even though you have 23, they're still duplicated. You have two sister chromatids per chromosome, which is why we have meiosis 2, which is essentially identical to mitosis. However, because we have half the number of chromosomes, we will end up with four haploid cells. The formation of sperm and ova are called gametogenesis, and the creation of sperm is called spermatogenesis. The process of spermatogenesis occurs with the spermatogonium, and this occurs within the semifiniferous tubules in the testes. The spermatogonium are initially diploid, and they become four haploid sperm cells after meiosis. Oogenesis begins with a primary oocyte found in the female ovary, and this undergoes meiosis to create your egg, but the difference is that the results in the production of a single ovum will also end up with two other daughter cells, and they're called polar bodies. So in spermatogenesis, you have four viable sperm. In oogenesis, you have one egg that will actually be an egg. It's also important to be familiar with the three causes of genetic variation. So these are independent assortment during metaphase 1 of meiosis, crossing over, which occurs during prophase 1 of meiosis, and random fertilization.